In this demonstration, we're going to look at selection uh, of 3D components using the various options available to us in Aspire. Uh, to do this, I'm going to use the, the, this file as a demonstration piece. It comprises a number of components that have either been modelled in Aspire or imported from VectorArt3D.com, uh, where you can get all sorts of pieces of clip art and assemble them very easily using Aspire's uh, component manipulation tools. Um, so we're going to start by moving across to the modeling tab um, down here, which is uh, where we find all of the tools associated with 3D components and component modeling. The tab, as you can see, shows us a page that's divided into two sections. The top section is a tree control that lists all of the um, current components that make up our model, uh, including any groups that we've made and the uh, sub components in those groups as well. Uh, we can select these things uh, in the list. Uh, we can also see what the combine mode is of each of our components. Uh, we'll come through uh, a bit later on to discuss these icons, but essentially you can see this is the merge high and this one is added. Um, the ones with the dots indicate that they're groups. They also have a little uh, box that allows us to click on that and open the group up. So we can see, for example, that our model in this case is made up of two flourishes. It's made up of a group uh, of components which form the central motif of the pie. Uh, it's made up of a banner at the bottom here, which is itself a group as well, made up of several sections. The text that lies on top of the banner and finally the underlying texture, which gives us the wood grain effect. So let's have a look uh, inside one of the groups just to demonstrate uh, an important point. So inside our group we can see that we've got two objects that are added together and the end result is being merged into our um, uh, list of components to build the composite relief on. Um, I can, um, having expanded this, I can move around my list uh, using these um, uh, scroll bars. Uh, but you should also be aware that underneath um, the scroll bars are is the splitter bar that divides our tool pane. And I can click and hold on that and actually move it around. And that's really convenient. So if uh, you're opening up lots of groups or you'll have a lot of components in your tree, then uh, you could just readjust the size of that so you don't have to keep scrolling around and that's really handy. Okay, so let's look at selection itself. We've started already by showing that we can just click on an item in the tree control. And uh, as you can see, the item is also shown highlighted in the 3D view and its associated 2D preview, the drawing object that's associated with it is an, with the component in our 2D drawing, also becomes highlighted. Um, and as we select, you can see at any time in any of the views what the current selection state is. In the 2D view, you can also select each of these um, 2D previews, and as you would expect, the associated components become selected in the tree and the 3D view. So again, I'm just single left clicking on the items uh, in the 2D view and their associated components become selected in the tree and the 3D view. Um, we can also select things directly in the 3D view. So I can double click, so I'm having to double left click now in the 3D view and I can select the items there too. Um, the reason I'm double clicking is because left click in Aspire allows you to twiddle the model. Um, so to do selection uh, you need to double click and you'll find that there's a uh, uh, each of the options we're going to discuss on selection here are essentially double click options in the 3D view. So we've been as consistent as we can. So that's selecting individual items. Uh, hopefully you're aware uh, already from your uh, experiences with vectors and vector drawing that it's often convenient to multiply select things, either to move them together or to act on things uh, as a set. Uh, and again, it, it, just like with vectors, Aspire allows you to hold down the shift key when you're selecting. Um, and that allows you to select several things at once. So with the shift key pressed, I'm just left clicking on their previews in the 2D view and they become selected throughout. Similarly, in the 3D view, now I'm going to shift, let's just deselect everything. I'm going to hold down the shift key and double click. And you can see exactly the same behavior now works with double click. So I'm, I'm doing a shift key press and double clicking with the left button in the 3D view to make multiple selections. Uh, finally, in the tree control, um, you can do something similar again, so I'm holding down the shift key here. In the tree control though, there is a slight distinction because um, the order of components is really significant in the tree control. Uh, and so we can um, 
see that there is a range of items here that we might want to select in a way that's quite different from uh, the 2 and 3D views which are laid out obviously spatially. So um, the shift key, if I select one uh, item at the top and hold down the shift key and press an item lower down, will select everything between those two, uh, which you'll find is really useful uh, from time to time when you're wanting to do uh, operations on sets of components that are usually grouped together in the composite um, building process. Um, the equivalent of individual selection in the tree control is with the control key. So uh, if you want to just pick items individually, hold down the control key as you left click them. And now you have complete flex flexibility to uh, select any um, items you like. Uh, also with the control key down, if you click on an existing or already selected item, it will become deselected. So that gives you complete control to select uh, any permutation of your components that you like. OK, the final thing I want to talk about in this uh, quick demonstration is that we've added um, relevant commands um, directly to the items via the right click menu. So in the tree control, if I right click an item, I get really useful uh, commands that relate to that component directly uh, at my mouse tip, as it were. Uh, similarly, if I select the 2D preview, um, there are commands there that re relate specifically to the 2D preview. Uh, and finally, one that you probably wouldn't find without um, knowing the rule, if you double right, if you right click, uh, double right click in the 3D view. So in the same way that we had to double left click, uh, you double right click in the 3D view, you'll get the um, equivalent uh, operations um, in the 3D view as well. So that's really handy for changing the combined mode or showing and hiding a particular item while you're looking at it in the 3D view. And that really concludes this section on selection. Uh, we'll um, look at some of the other uh, interesting manipulation tools in a further demonstration.